Okay, my name is Omo Bolanle Ogunwe Gogo. Um, well, a lot of people around the estate call me Mrs. Jasper. That name practically has come to stay. I keep telling them it's not part of my government name. <laughs> but you know, during lockdown, my husband and I will come to the estate. We're building grandma's house at the time. And he would introduce himself to everybody. Say, oh, hi, my name is Jasper. Automatically, I became, you know, Mrs. Jasper. As you all know, I'm an accountant by profession. Um, I've worked as one practically all my life. I'm married, I've got children. I also do business on the side, yes. I am the president of a cooperative society for women as well. Um, I take every opportunity to empower people. I believe in um, investment. I'm a real estate, um, what do they call it? Enthusiast, yes. So that's me in a nutshell. Well, I mean, there's something that I always say about myself, even in the place of work. I say that um, there is no human I can't work with, all right? And with every given assignment, I always do my best. So I guess that is just what, you know, what um, kept me, even when I do not want to, you know, people come and say, oh, please do this for us. And I usually like to do my best every time I'm given an assignment to do. So I guess that's why I've kind of like featured in every ESCO as it were. Though I was not official in the first one, but um, every time they ask for volunteers, I will step up and I will support them. So I guess that's how come. So um, I would say that why we are not um, in a great place, but we're in a good place. We're in a good place because, I mean, considering the things that we have achieved, the things that we have done, um, we have not fallen back, you know, on our commitments to people. And um, we prioritize in the important things. For example, in the beginning, electricity was very important. So that, you know, took the center stage and that was prioritized and money was spent on that. And then the road became the next important thing. So I would say that we're not in an excellent place, like I said before, but we're in a good place. And every time we run into challenges or murky waters, there are great people in the estate too who step up and they bail us out. We haven't really had um, a structured budget as it were before now. But um, now that there has been a proper election and all the positions are filled and committees are put in place, our plan is to ask all the committees to share their projects or their plans with the numbers with us before the end of this year. I mean, that call will come later. So we will ask all the committees to share their plans, what they want to do in the coming year. That will be submitted to the committee, the um, budget and planning committee. So when we receive all of that, we will sit down, have a meeting, and then we will look through we will then decide which ones will come, you know, and then we'll allocate resources. Now, for us to be able to even allocate resources to those things, um, we have to be able to forecast how much we hope to bring in based on the um, number of people in the estate developments and then how people pay their dues, security or development levy. And one of the ways to be able to do that forecast is to have a good database, you know, of um, the people we have in the estate. And so um, part of the plans that we have before the year will run out, we should have even started that this September. We plan to employ or to engage like two coppers, youth coppers, like we had during the election. So they will go around and they will collect data. So that data collection will aid in our projections for income. And then when we get all of that and we put the income together, the projected income together, we can then plan on how to allocate the resources for the different um, projects that will happen next year. When people come into the estate now and they see the road, they see that um, there is now constant electricity. It gives them joy. And we didn't even have to do too much campaign or go around for enforcement. In the past, 
we will go around with the um, Kenji Electric carrying ladder and trying to, you know, uh, uh, take down people's wires who have not paid electricity uh, connection fee or development levy or even their security levy. But you see, as the developments are going on, when the road project started, we started with the drainage. But it didn't look like it was gaining traction. People were not seeing or appreciating what was going on until they started to see the paving stone. And that spurred people on, you know. They saw that, oh, this is going on. So it encouraged them, they began to pay their levies. And the good thing is, as they are paying their levies, they are seeing the work that are going on. You can, I mean, you can practically see where your money is going. It will encourage a lot of people. So what they will enjoy is, as you pay your dues, you know, and as you also spend your time and volunteer, you would actually see the application of the funds directly, you know, affecting or impacting on people's lives. Now, we drive out of here. We're not ashamed anymore that we have muddy tires when we get to town, you know. Unlike before, when you appear in certain places, they look at you and wonder where you came out from because your tires are so dirty. And we don't even have to. So, I mean, the, the activities, the projects are impacting positively, directly on the lives of residents. So, I mean, there's no gain saying what, what it is to gain. Um, what we have, what we have designed right now is um, we have designed that um, the financial secretary and myself have discussed this and we have designed what we call um, payment requisition form, which anybody who requires funds released for whatever project will have to fill out and get approval from the chairman. All right. So when we fill that out and we get the approval, I mean, it's also we get it's everybody in the ESCO is aware of what this um, expenses are for and then the chairman approves before we disburse and then it doesn't take only one person to disburse the funds somebody will go in there and upload the payment and then somebody else will log in there and approve the payment all right so that's, that's it, like a division of labor it also ensures that no one person can fully carry out a transaction you understand so these are the things we have put in place and what we plan to do is every quarter we will publish our status of accounts like our income and expenditure where we are at the last meeting we gave a detailed report of how the road project account has gone i mean where there's constant communication where you give reports to stakeholders that's, that's accountability and transparency right there For that, we have been exploring on um, other income generating activities. You know, we have been brainstorming. We are not just um, depending on security levy or development levy. We are looking at certain businesses that the estate, you know, that can be done in the name of the estate so that when people patronize those services, you know, income can come from there. We are also looking at um, Apart from this one-off development levy, perhaps we can ask for uh, maintenance, you know, maybe a certain token. It won't be as high as the initial development levy that people can pay. So as, as um, we look around and explore, it could even be like um, an arena, a play area or whatever. It could be a business center, you know, when we create the estate secretariat, we can have and printing, typesetting, binding, you know, those kinds of activities going on there where the estate staff will also, you know, carry out in a way to generate income to even pay their own salaries, you know, and something extra for the estate. So we're exploring other areas, other avenues of income generation, which we will talk about, you know, as, as they become, um, as they come to fruition here. I mean, the first thing that we did, you know, before now, we, we didn't have online banking, we didn't have internet banking, and you can imagine how tedious it, it is that every transaction has to go through a writing checks, you know, for payment. And sometimes you find that because um, there's, not, there's no online banking, you would don't want to write checks for every little amount you have to pay. Sometimes we'd have to pay that money to somebody's account and then the person would now have to go and disburse and all of that. So, I mean, within this one month, we have been able to activate online banking 
and um, each um, category of um, of um, approvers have their tokens, okay, which we which we use. And then, I mean, right now, during when we're doing the drive for development levy, we've been able to quickly confirm payments. Some people make payments, you know, we are able to quickly confirm payments, and then they, I mean, they they are assured that their money has has been received and recorded. Um, we're responsive as well. The records for the road, because that's the major projects we have done for now, has been shared. We're doing this, you know, we're doing this alongside VIP, and we have committees where both estates have representatives, and we share the accounts, you know, how far we have gone, what has been spent, what. So there's, there's, there's accountability, there's a um, record, there's good record keeping. You know, um, I believe that um, if somebody is living in a certain place, I mean, some, we all know how it is. We talk about um, developed countries and how, you know, people are enjoying what they are enjoying. But I'd like to say that if they were not financially responsible citizens of those places, they would not have the benefit to enjoy the things that they enjoy over there. A lot of Nigerians complain about Nigeria, but many of us are not financially responsible. We evade tax, we avoid tax. The things that we should do, our own responsibilities, which is supposed to help, you know, to give us a better society. People don't want to do it. There are people who have lived here. I mean, I've kept security records from, say, year 2000, 2001. And there are people who have lived here, here for three years and probably started paying security levy only this year. So I'd like to say that, I mean, for us to have a society that is beneficial for everyone, which all of us will enjoy, everyone needs to be financially responsible. Step up, you know, pay what you're supposed to pay, pay what you're committed to pay. Because you even see that, you know, the funds are being put to good use for everyone to benefit.